So, good morning, everyone. Can you guys help me switch on the monitor? Just press on the back button hold for like one half second. And usually things are actually switches on, so you guys see the same thing here. Um, so this is experience design, just double checking, right? Some agree, a little. Okay, so some people agree, okay. Does anyone else think that we're in a different course? Just to check carefully. Because I'm only prepared for that one. But, you know, we can talk about other things as well. Um, so you have had like two months of um, yeah, experience design from, you know, strictly design perspective, I suspect. Uh, uh, read by Chell Are and his colleagues and so on from the Department of Design. And the idea is, and I believe he introduced you to that, uh, that we take over this month and um, um, you know talk about design from a slightly different perspective also of course experience but very much grounded in games right so uh, we are more on the game programming side of things um, but before we run to any co you know a quick conclusion usually there's the conception that as soon as you talk about games you talk about tech and um, we generally don't do that in this course um, because last year we ran this course in, 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 the, in its entirety also with design together but more more, more load on uh, games and game development and uh, the emphasis here is that we actually don't necessarily generally talk about tech, but rather about the design aspects as well, but slightly uh, from, from a slightly different perspective uh, than what you are used to probably from, uh, from, from uh, Chelara. Anyway, um, before I go on, a uh, few, few names I need to uh, uh, drop. By the way, do you guys usually start about 8.15 here? Or 8.30 or 9 o'clock or 9.30, something like this? No? 8.15. 8.15, okay. So, yes. So, uh, I suspect that some, some people may be late because of uh, um, yeah, unforeseen environmental changes overnight. I, uh, I was surprised myself this morning. Um, but there will be two more people coming later on, so we'll see the whole team and you get an appreciation of who you are dealing with and how chaotic it will be. So. Uh, <coughs> So be prepared for that. So first of all, a few names. Um, so Simon McCallum, he's, um, oh, uh, he's, he's still at NTNU, but he's now uh, living and working in Wellington at Victoria University as well, because one university is too boring. Um, I think that's the official stance. Anyway, but he is the gamer. He comes from a game industry background, and he has been uh, um, extensively uh, been working in the uh, you know sharing of game-related insights in the context of teaching. So he, he pretty much helped shape this uh, games pro programming uh, program in, um, in Jervik in particular, when he was still the Hochschule and now at NTNU. Um, and he's actually uh, yeah, uh, an interesting character to deal with. Perhaps we have the um, opportunity to have him in a live stream or something like this, but he kind of shaped the paper and the course, so we still refer to him here anyway, and he'll probably uh, chip in uh, at multiple occasions in terms of uh, um, you know ideas or comments that uh, you guys may make either on Blackboard or elsewhere. So currently he's moving back or has been moving back to New Zealand. He's doing stuff like that. I don't know. I, I can't see it either. But it's basically it's a trebuchet, like you know the thing you sh throw stones into medieval castles and stuff like this. And uh, to sell it academically, he calls it experimental archaeology. Yeah, whatever. I mean, yeah. So it's also a form of game, I suspect. But anyway, so people, people are weird, aren't they? So the second guy that you'll be dealing with, and you saw him before, he's the uh, studio program leader for uh, the Bachelor of Programming. So anyone who does programming either came across him or will sooner or later, usually in a traumatic fashion, but that would be Marius. So, um, and he is... Um, you know, also has an experience in gaming, but it's more on the hard kind of computer science side of things. Uh, but uh, has been working with some microsystems, Oracle, all those names that are in the meanwhile have been bought up or are probably uh, leaving the market sooner or later. Uh, but so, no, he has, has quite a legacy in the uh, area of uh, development in, the, in this area and is, of course, a bit of uh, a um, eccentric when it comes to his physical exercise. So a bit, bit of running is always necessary. That's why I suspect he's a bit late anyway today. Um, Richard Barlow, he will, talk, he will probably take the lead in terms of presenting things, and he is based in Hama. And you guys know what's in Har what, in, what you can find in Hama from a game perspective? Gamers amongst you? First question I should have asked, how many of you are actually doing the games track, the Bachelor of Programming, and how many of you are doing design games? Cool, two? Not sure yet? You haven't decided yet. Okay, I haven't decided yet. I, do, I, need to, I need to sell it to you, right? Is it? Mm -hmm. I need to sell it to you, right? You're still in that? Yeah, cool, you got me. Okay, applications. Mm -hmm. Two. 
What happens to our club here? Are they all uh, extinct or are they watching streams? Hey guys, are you watching streams? Uh, by the way, do you stream this class usually? No. Well, now you do. So, um, <laughs> so I you'll find it online, it's on YouTube, right? Whatever I'm talking here and showing here, so you can retrace it as well. No excuse, you still need to show up, right? So, uh, of course people don't show up. So that's probably the, the guys who figured it out and said, ah, cool, I stayed home, that's no, no big deal then. Um, design then. Or what other kind of uh, uh, cohort do I find here? Sorry, I claim uh, ignorance here. Who else is here? Come on. There, were, there was a uh, subset of people who didn't raise their hands. What are you guys doing? Be brave. I don't buy it on Tuesdays. <laughs> no? So applications, games, there must be something else. Design? Web development? Yes. yes. OK, cool. One person and the rest? Two persons. Cool. Brave. No? I just want to ensure that I sell the right content in the right context, right? So you get a good understanding of what you want to do. Okay, the rest, the undefined rest, the, the subset of the rest of the students, it doesn't know what it does yet, uh, they do yet, um, be informed. So the third person talking here will be Richard Barlow. He will come in probably not today, but on Friday. And he has an extensive background in game development. This is originally from UK, but he works in Hama at the Collective. Did anyone hear about the Collective before? The game people, perhaps? No? Yeah, um, please. Is that the game jam in January? Or is that okay. something? Um, they, um, I, I believe they participate to, to some extent on it, not in it, but no, it's more like a, a collective of game development uh, companies, if you like, right? So think about like an incubator hub, so, you know, it's like a tech center in Hama that basically, uh, who basically develop games, right? So since game development is a highly uh, and he'll certainly talk about this. Um, it's a highly uh, unpredictable business, right? You don't know if your game uh, you know, takes off, right? So it's quite challenging to predict it, of course. Um, but um, so they work in a collective so they can manage the uncertainty and risks. So, you know, they share building and stuff like this. If some, one company goes down, at least for a few months, then, you know, they can still survive there and so on. So it's a bit of a, a, a social uh, element there as well in order to stimulate and retain some game um, programming or game development activity in, in, in Norway and specific in Hama. So it's quite well known amongst the gamers uh, if you decide to go down that route. I'm um, certainly will talk about it and the games he has developed. One's of reason one recent one is actually more like a social uh, value oriented one. It's called Lebensborn. It's re referring to the, yeah, you guys know better than I do. Um, he will talk about it. So I'll leave it to him to do that. Uh, probably not today. Uh, me, yes, true. I don't do games. I'm actually coming from the area of multi-agent systems um, and agent-based modeling, whatever that is. See it as games without the player, right? So we, we let in individuals interact in some sort of simulation fashion and do stuff, right? But there's not this entertainment element to it, so it's a bit more of an objective perspective on games. But surprise, surprise, I understand games as well. So we get away with this. I have some industrial background as well which was so boring that I decided to go back to academia. So, um, and then I wasted some time in New Zealand as well. Well, everyone makes a mistake. Um, okay, so course background. So generally we run a full course of this consisting of, what is it, 14 weeks usually, of a lot of activity in, including game design and so on. And that's usually a curriculum we're looking at, uh, aspects such as, you know, uh, what, what, what is specific, what, do we need to do if we design, for example, a game? Um, what are the techniques we use? How do we source creativity? But also then how do we structure the process, right? So because as, as game developers, similar to application developers, so it's very transferable, you kind of need to, um, you kind of need to be able to have a structured process. Even though you're creative and have new ideas, you know, and need to blow my mind, uh, you kind of still need to ensure that you meet deadlines, right? And uh, again, Richard will, will tell you quite a bit about this because deadlines is key in this uh, entire business. And that's usually what we tend to te teach in this course as well. We probably see if we pack it into those uh, uh, our few weeks that we have as well. Did he talk about software development in teams in this course already? Hint, be brave. If you didn't get that yet. No, no did you? No? Yes, no, no, okay. Okay, so we probably need to sneak that in. So how we do actually uh, efficient development, a bit of structure in the process, so it's quite important. And I think it's also relevant for uh, uh, anyone who's working in a team uh, setting. So it's really more on the you know organizational aspects and actually how to get started doing a game. And then the second aspect, which is okay, admittedly a bit more technological, 
That's where the boring bit comes in, right? Who likes tech? No one does. Um, so how you actually do the game, right? So how you design the game, how do you write, program the game, right? The tools that we use um, to do that, especially if you're doing pre game programming, you will not be able to avoid any of those. And uh, yeah, some insights of, from the industry as well, right? So many students that uh, study game development here um, actually eventually decide to go a different route. So, uh, but that usually el ends them up being exceptional programmers in an area that you know um, doesn't have a lot of insights into things that they are doing, right? Because game, pro game programming, unlike conventional application programming, is often more focused on efficiency. Yeah, you need to. The key thing is that what's the one of the most important things in uh, interactive games? You talk about you know action games and so on. What's the most important things you watch out for? Um, E bugs is cool, yeah, bugs is cool. Let's assume we do some reasonably solid software development. What else? Performance. Performance, right? And how do you measure performance in games often? Uh, Especially in action games? FPS. Exactly, FPS, right? So that's the that's anything that's count. So it basically means that you need to be, ah, oh, that's Myers. that's the, he, he was jogging here, I bet, or ran a marathon uh, in between. Cycling. So, yeah, so, oh, cycling. You made, made the same mistake as I did. All right. Um, <laughs> Yes, FPS, frames per second, right? Performance. So you will be ending up probably being a very good developer, right? So wherever you actually go. So you can only win, yeah? So, but realistically, again, the industrial challenges uh, uh, lead often to the fact that not everyone works in the game development industry. The collective is one of the signs of precisely that because you need to you know, balance your, your losses uh, at some stage. Cool. So, but this is something Richard, I think, will talk about more, right? So the industry aspects in particular. What we're talking about today more is you know, what are games in the first place? And if you want to learn more, something we tend to use in, 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 in our interpretation of the course um, is this book by Jesse Shell, and it's The Art of Game Design, and it's now second edition, I believe. Um, and it's a really nice book, so it's actually hardly any tech in there. So if you are, you, you feel like, oh God, no, I don't <coughs> want to deal with the FPS thing, and I don't want to know about the latest GPU, perfectly right, that's the book you want, because it doesn't have any of that. It just briefly talks about tech at the very end, but the entire book is about how do you develop proper games, yeah? Including, you know, uh, what are the things you need to think about? We talked some ab about some of those today. Um, and, you know, some, you know, structural elements, design uh, aspects and so on. But fundamentally, the idea is to apply different perspectives on the game and then systematically work your way through, basically structure, right? So to ensure that the game has reasonable mechanics, we'll talk about what what that means in, in a bit later, but also uh, aesthetics. So, you know, that this game is aesthetically pleasing, right? The games I usually write are okay in mechanics, but really bad in aesthetics. So those kind of things, right? You need to balance those challenges and, of course, uh, to some extent, tech. But we'll not get confused with any of that one here. So the whole tech stuff, that's a bit out of the scope of this course. So for the game developers in particular, third year, sec second, third year, you will you cover much more of that one, right? So this is more like setting the scene, the entire um, um, course or particular our four weeks here. So if you're interested in game design in general, I think it's a worthwhile book to get, yeah. right? So it's really quite quite a good but read. But it has a lot of uh, section on teamwork as well. It has yeah. a lot of Structure. sections about experience design, so kind of designing the experience for the user. So even if you're not thinking and planning to write games, it's a good book to to read because it kind of talks about the user. It talks about how to create an experience for the user. Yeah. Um, so he starts talking about him being a juggler and how you kind of uh, prepare a performance for the user. So it, it has nothing to do with games. Sometimes it's just more general than that. Yeah. Much more, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. so worth what I have a look at. So no advertisement. Just, just point out. <laughs> anyway, um, okay, what's the game? Good one. So <coughs> what's the game, guys? Come on. That will take half an hour. It's yeah. <laughs> What's the game? <laughs> like I, I, you know, I'm here, but I'm not, you know, you need to provide the content. So, of course, what did you expect? So, what's the game? What do you think a game is, anyway? Yep. Um, there's usually a challenge. You have to cool. a goal to achieve. Yeah, challenge is good. Challenge, that's, I like that a lot. So, yeah, good. And goal, he said. Uh, goal as well. Yeah. Do they go together or are there two different points? So, two, two points. Two points, eh? Challenge. So you need to memorize what I wrote here because you won't be able to read it. <laughs> I try my best. God. I really need to install a keyboard here. So, goal was the other one. What was there as well? I saw a tentative race. 
of your hands now. Uh, fun. Sorry? Fun? Fun! Right, fun, yeah, let's do, yeah, let's do fun, you know. Yeah, fun <laughs> is fun. <laughs> fun entertainment in the widest yeah. sense, right? So it probably yeah. goes along. Uh, so, yeah, there was another. What was your. Yeah, I was going to say entertainment. This one as well? Yeah. Entertainment. So, entertain oh, okay, sorry. So I took your, <laughs> your precious um, contribution away. Anything else? That's it? We're good? Entertainment, fun, goals, mm -hmm. challenge? So, sorry, uh, both, yeah, please. You learning. Learning? That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Really? Okay. Learning, okay. Mm -hmm. It's actually very true, but uh, very rare thing. Yeah, please. Um, it's like a way to lose. A way to lose. Yes, mm -hmm. so Is that somehow related to, to yeah. challenge? You know, I you know. <coughs> Lose, probably, you know, that suggests we can win as well, <coughs> in rarest of cases, of course. Maybe something related to learning, like developing a new skill. Ah, right, 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 right. <sighs> Same category though, right? Learning skill development, or is that different? What do you think? Maybe different. What a subject. It could be different because skills yeah. can't be like mechanical, like yeah. how. It's the, you with your the K and the S, right? Knowledge and the skills, yeah. right? So, mm, yeah, okay. So we can do both, right? So let's 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 just uh, fletch it out here, okay? So would Minecraft in creative mode be a game? Who would think that Minecraft in creative mode is game? It's an active form of entertainment as opposed to a passive one like watching movies. Ah, uh -huh. uh -huh. are movies games? No. no. Good. Why not? Uh, because they're passive. Mm -hmm. You just watch them. So you're suggesting an element of interactivity. Is that something I could put down here? <coughs> no? Okay. Um, in games, uh, you are the protagonist, um, usually. Yep. Yeah, cool. There's some player, right? So is that protagonist? Like story. Like yeah, okay, well, one of the other. That's the that's deep one. So uh, let's stick <laughs> to that one first. Um, um, we come back to it. Or you have an identity, yep. which you usually don't have in real life. You have another identity. Mm -hmm. So is chess a game, though? Mm. You can uh, even do that in uh, like play. Because even in tag, you are either the one who tags or the one who's going to be tagged. So you do have a role. There you go. So how, how are the roles in chess? In what chess? what protagonist I am playing chess with? Is in chess, chess are game. you black or white? Chess yeah. could be kind of like being two admirals controlling soldiers. Kind of like. So you're like be, the yeah. controlling the... It's still a role though, right? So role is the... Yeah. That's the, the kind of yeah. umbrella term that I still find because you mentioned that it's pretty good actually, right? So in any game you find some sort of set of rules attached to a particular type of individual, right? Which could be a role, right? So, okay. So protagonist is still, I still like that bit, but it's probably <coughs> more for some games, right? Not necessarily for all. What do you think? I think you can find it to almost all games. So, okay. So you we have should to be willing to have a the variation of uh, what you mean. Yeah. Uh, so in football, you definitely have roles because you're either the keeper or yep. blah, blah, blah. Uh, In Candy Crush, uh, it's kind of harder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good one. Uh, in Tetris, it's harder. It's harder to define your role, but you are technically a role because it is the first thing you're trying to... You know, to organize the yeah. space. Yeah. Yeah, but that's... Yeah. But it's still kind of a role because you're still the person that's trying to organize the... You don't do that in your everyday life, organizing candy, you know? Uh, <laughs> <so> <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe you I like the way you take it so literal, yeah. so it's really good. <laughs> I never thought that deeply about Candy Crush, but yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> Everything in a game, you technically do have a role regardless. Good. So, put it, should we put role there? Role is, I you think... You can have rules first and then the roles. So oh. That's a deep one as well. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys just throw out, out there, you know, like this, you this entire block of philosophy we leave out, role and rules is kind of different, right? Yes. No, because you need the rules to have the role. 
because the <laughs> yeah <laughs> you need to know how the you know, the rules of the game in regards yep. to how the to kind of know your role and what you're supposed to do in your role yeah so we say basically rules first then role yeah okay so but uh, just to clarify so the rules also apply to the game itself independent of the roles right yeah. If you think about the physical world, right? So whether or not there's a protagonist in there, let's say this room, there are certain things that could physically be done or not, yeah. right? So even whether or not the player is actually there, which is kind of unrealistic, admittedly. So we have rules and role. Okay. This is getting long here. I thought about like four points. <coughs> <laughs> okay. So rules and rules. So rules a big one. Yeah, we need to come back to that, right? So, who is the big one? Um, uh, please. Element of story. Story, that was good. So, it's a like a movie, like you're playing a character in a movie. Cool, story. Some, some storyline, right? A narrative, right? So, it overlays a particular game. That's right. So, yeah, that sounds like a very quick... Wow. So, is Minecraft a game? Ah, coming back to that. Yeah. Why? It has more. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, it's, it's difficult because it's like, objectively speaking, it's kind of hard to define it as a game. But you can still kind of set your own goals that you want to accomplish. So even though the game explicitly doesn't give you a goal, you can still set yourself goals. Mm. Okay. To make something or do something. Well, it does give you some soft goals in the form of achievements. Yeah, you still have achievements and you can get to the end. Which they later add into the game. Mm -hmm. Give it some sort of like storyline. What what about open world games then? Um, usually, most open world games does have some sort of story mm -hmm. uh, and, and a goal. And often you will have a, a lot of smaller side quests around that can be separate from the main story. Right. Uh, but just running around in an open world doesn't have any goals really, unless you set yourself some more goals. Okay. Okay, so there's a bit of a motivational aspect yeah. in you kind of interactively defining what the goal means to you, right? Yeah. So I couldn't play GTA and just, you know, erratically kill people or just drive around the scenery or actually do what I'm supposed to do, right? Yeah. Is that the sentiment I catch there? Good. Okay, yeah, I think that's something we can share. Any other views on this? Particularly this side? Yeah, please. What's the question? Do you know any sort of games? We're thinking about the categories. Uh, so, in case you can't read this, you can't. it's uh, challenge, goal, fun, entertainment, learning, interactivity, rules, roles, and story. So, those were characteristics, yeah. but which one in the final game, right? Yeah. So, the question is there um, are certain types of, ga you know, of games, actually, games, number one. Or did we miss something here? So we're basically just doing a, a sanity check yeah, on, yeah. on, on I mean, those. I was paying attention just. Yeah, okay. I thought there was a specific question. No, 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 not right now. I just uh, I wonder. I was going to say interactive earlier, but. Yeah, cool. Ah, right, right, cool. Yeah, yeah so interactivity. Fine, so. I think that's one of the core, core points, right? Yeah. So uh, whoever said as well. So interactivity, of course, is uh, something that makes it very unique. Yes, please. Uh, it can be a social area. Social arena. Okay. What's the social arena? Just to uh, it's uh, something when uh, two people or more people come together and do something. Okay. But so you said it can be. It, it, can be. it doesn't have to be. So like, uh, even if it's just a one-player game, you can connect mm -hmm. through it. So. Yeah. You have played it, and the other person has played it, and you can talk about it. So. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a very good point. In fact, that's something, if you look at games, okay, admittedly technological games, so I said we're not talking about tech, but now I do. But many of those games actually started out single player games and then got this, right? The whole community building come around this and then they realized like, cool, we can actually have money off that one, right? So suddenly you have a community and then, you know, things like, uh, uh, yeah, all the big, big games, World of Warcraft, League of Legends and so on, they pick up because of that in particular, right? So because you have this pull factor and people playing against each other. Very good point. But here, this is one example where tech is an enabler because internet got faster and we actually can afford to do it. So which of those are necessary and which one yes. of those are not needed but to define a game? All of them are necessary or which ones are like? Let's see if we can mark them. Like it's good. Oh, permanently. No, not good. So what if I watch two people dancing tango, okay? They're playing a role of being a dancer. There are rules. Uh, they have to follow those rules. They try not to step on each other's toes. Is it a game? I don't think so. 
I would rather call it like performance. So why, and also why do we need a definition of game? Well, there are people studying games and they have to sort of close the domain. So they say, we're not studying people dancing tango, we're studying this. And they have to say what this is. So that's why it is objectively really hard to define exactly what game is, but we still try to do that for operational reasons, to kind of have this domain which excludes other things, right? Yeah? I would say a game is a combination of things. You can't just have one thing, like you said, rules and then somewhere. Uh, I would, s in my personal opinion, this might be wrong or whatever, uh, but you have rules, you have to have be interactive, uh, a type of failure state, whatever that is, it can be open-ended, but a type of failure state. Mm -hmm. Failure state? Yeah, like, for example, in like creating one in Minecraft, you do have different fails. First of all, you can die, but you can also fail at your own goals. Mm. Uh, so basically goals and stuff, yeah, you yeah. Know, challenge. Yeah. It's kind of, <laughs> we, yeah. we often call it like win and lose conditions. Yeah, but, it, yeah. Yeah, but it still sounds better with Fellow State, because yeah. you're going to say you lose always. <laughs> Maybe it's an interesting one. Because you don't technically lose when you didn't build a building, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you just didn't build it, so you failed at your goal. Yeah. Yep. Good. Three. Okay. Anything else? Good one. I would say those three are the main. It needs to be fun, though. It doesn't need to be fun, it can be enticing. So, yeah, yeah. It, it, it should be fun or entertaining. Entertaining, right, right? Entertaining doesn't need to be fun, right? No, it doesn't have to be entertaining. Fun doesn't need to be entertaining? Well, I no. kind of is. No, yeah. Is there fun without entertaining? They're not equivalent. They're not, right? Yeah. So, but, but for the sake of our discussion, I think we can it's keep in one. It should be one of the two, at least. Okay, not so do you want to split them up? You think yeah. fun and entertaining? Yeah. yeah, okay, cool, cool. So how do you differentiate them? Yeah, so... Entertaining will get you back regardless. Fun is just like, haha, I'm enjoying myself. But mm. you know, you can feel kind of disgust but still love watching a horror movie. Yeah. So, so there like is you're still entertained, but you don't think it's fun. Yeah, 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 okay. Mm. Cool, so entertainment is more important yeah. than fun. Yeah, good, good, good. You got that out as well, good, okay. Any other views or opposing views? It's kind of a discussion thing here, so right? Bo so we both entertainment and fun are really hard to define. Exactly. They are harder to define than games. <laughs> That's very fuzzy, very fuzzy. So fun for some people is, you know, killing themselves in like, you know, Iron Man type of thing. And that's for them fun. Uh, yes, that's one of them. That's yeah. One. So, yeah. Same with entertainment. And for some people that would be considered torture. Uh, so. It's really hard. We do spend some time, like normally this class was for the whole semester and we actually had a section dedicated to investigation of what fun is and what are the different elements of fun. Um, but not now. Not now. <laughs> yeah. Good. So we captured that. So do we kept it? We kept uh, everything essential? I, I think goals are important. Goals are important. To keep things interesting. Yeah. Is goals related to challenge or not? Yeah, related. But it's not the same, right? Or is it the same? Not, not the same. Not the same. Not so we need to, any game needs to have a goal. Is that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You guys suggested, yeah, in worst case, you need to make the goals yourself. Yeah. Right? Yeah, you can make the goal, but at least it should be like the goal. OK. So can you have a game with a goal without a challenge? Yeah, like an easy goal. So again? Like easy to do, cool. Yeah. Not Is it still a game then? So yeah. you can have a game that has a goal but no challenge? Yeah. It, it, it will not be entertaining. Not be entertaining, right? So you're mm -hmm. actually missing out on this one, right? Yeah. You have a challenge. You cool. have a proper challenge. Good. So, yeah, I think it's a uh, cool. So how about, I have a chessboard, I have a layout, like some pieces are in some, some places, and it says uh, checkmate in three moves. And I have to think of how to do checkmate in three moves. Is it a game or what, what is it? It has a challenge, it has a goal, it has this kind of a lose and fail state. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I would say it's a game. It's a game within a game. <laughs> okay. A game within a game. Because chess is a game. And then yeah, yeah, I understand. understand. The nature of games. Yeah, so some, That's cool. like some scholars would agree. 
And some scholars studying games would say that's not a game, it's a puzzle. And they differentiate between puzzles and games. And they say puzzle is sort of like this. It has a goal, it has a single objective. Well defined. You well defined, you either fail it or you achieve it. Uh, once you achieve it, it stops being a puzzle because once you've checked, done it, it, it's okay that you know there is no repeatability value in that puzzle uh, because once you solved it, it's solved, uh, and they kind of differentiate it. So my question then is: Is puzzle games not games? Yeah, exactly. That's a good good question. So a lot of puzzles, like you know, Candy Crush, can be considered like a single Candy Crush you know, uh, interaction, it's sort of a puzzle. You're th thinking what would m maximize the collapse, right? It's a puzzle, but a sequence of puzzles often is a game. So we do see games which are con consisting of sequence of puzzles. Um, I don't know the answer. <laughs> it's up to whoever is studying the field to define it, I guess. Yeah. Because then if you have a sequence of puzzles, then you don't do anything different, and you still take the game. Because you just have a sequence of puzzles. Yeah, as long as they kind of provide you this repeatability, right? Because if Candy Crush was always the same puzzle, that mm. wouldn't be a game, uh, according to the definition. Because once you solve it, you solve it, right? Mm. Yeah. Can it be a game without a challenge? But, uh, okay. So interesting discussion, you guys. Continue. Um, no, we. we, we <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, so yeah, we have some value there, I think. Yes. So we, I think we talk more about puzzles in a second. Yeah. Anyway, um, cool. I think. But is there anything else we're missing on games? Maybe rewards. Rewards, rewards. Could we kind of put them into win and lose conditions yeah. a bit, right? So they're kind of subsumed up there in this failure or win state or whatever yeah. you want to describe it. Like. The so rewards are tend to be like a form of feedback to the player, uh, whether they're doing well or not. Um, Punishment rewards. That's right. Cool. But so, but it's good. We need to debug our way through. So because we want to have a shared understanding. Nothing we're missing. If there's something missing, you need to post in Blackboard. So because now um, I think we have a good good set here. And this Marif just said, um, well, you know, why do we waste the time on defining games? And we waste a lot of time defining games right now. So for the sake of the stream, I hope they captured this one. So why do we do that? Again, to delineate scope, right? So we want to figure out what's within our definition of game, what's not. But also, worst of all, as from an academic perspective, you're defining terms, why are you doing that? Independent of games, more, more generally speaking. Why do we define terms? Why do we waste so much time in defining terms? Not only nice, it's essential. <laughs> <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice, nice. That's the gamified uh, perspective. It's nice, you know. It's entertaining to know. But now you're, but you're spot on, of course. Right? It's about having a shared conceptualization, right? If, if, we, if I use the term game right now, I want you to exactly know what I mean, right? So yeah. if you talk to uh, um, new institutional economists, you say game, they mean any institutional setup that you can imagine. And entertainment is certainly not part of it. I mean, that, that's like the most boring thing ever, right? They think about an, a public administration as a game. So, um, so, but in this context, of course, we have you know, factors like entertainment, modeled lose or win states and things like this, right? So you may not have that in, in those conceptions of games. So it's quite important to have a shared conceptualization of, 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 of uh, a concept. That's why we, we are doing it. So yeah, maybe one more comment. Please. So um, often when you're talking about games, you have to have a player. So it's not just something which is outside. You cannot talk about, let's say, uh, chess being kind of an abstract game without the players actually playing it. So you often include the interaction because there is an interactivity in the, on the board, but you will not have interactivity without a human kind of or somebody doing it, right? Um, so then there is a question whether uh, if a game is being played in non-voluntary basis, will it still be a game? So if someone is forced to do something, would that be a game? You will have all those elements, you will have interactivity, whatever, whatever, but the, the activity will not be voluntary. Uh, would that constitute con continue to constitute a game? Um, no, because you play a passive role then. 
because you don't have any options to choose? <coughs> well, you have options in the game, you just don't have an option to quit it. <laughs> Uh, and you lose the element of entertainment. That's right. So <laughs> it, that's a matter of perspective, though, right? So if you think about, is who is supposed to have the entertainment? The player. Is it? I mean, this is an open question. There's no no right and wrong to say. It's a discussion point. Exactly, it is a discussion. Because point. you could also say the observer is supposed to have fun, right? So how many people watch esports amongst you? Quite some, right? So why do you watch it? Do you play actively? <laughs> No, right? No, you don't. But you have entertainment factor there, right? So you're observing how people do, how they perform, right? So it may actually be that you have actually more fun than the player who's kind of in a stress state actually to win, right? Against an you know, open-ended white community. So that's the question. Where's the boundary of the game, right? So it perhaps you guys... Be my favorite, that I'm not having fun playing this game. It's only my job. Yeah, exactly. So you're talking about work. Yeah. <laughs> Right? Is that an understanding? So, yep, that's the definition as well. Yeah, so exactly, because there is this concept of play. What is play? Right? And often play is part of definition of games, that games require a play, playfulness. That it's something you do, like you, we were discussing <coughs> open world sort of explorations like Minecraft created. It's, you know, it's a kind of a game world which you go in and play, right? It doesn't really necessarily have a built-in goal. You can set your own goals and so on, but this element of play is there. Whereas with those... Uh, Hardcore streamers, it's a job. It's, you know, they go and play with something else, but <laughs> when they do the job, they do the job. Yeah. yeah. Good. Any more comments regarding this for now? We're not done yet, don't worry. And there is, yeah, as Chris said, there is no right and wrong answer. It, it is about defining the terms, right? So, for example, when we were discussing and I said win and lose state, and sh you said no, a failure state is a better term, we can say it means the same thing. And then we could use loose state being failure state, right? And then we agree, and uh, when we talk, we have the same understanding. So exactly. that's why we define exactly. the, the terms to have a common understanding and yeah. be able to progress with our discussions. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if we don't have that, that you know, a link between what I mean and what you mean, then you know, we will be unable to communicate. Good point. So if you read scientific papers, which you eventually do, you'll find in the beginning there's always a terminology section where it's basically, in this context, I understand games as, right? And for the remainder of the paper, you need to interpret it the way the author uh, described it. So it's the same thing here. But of course, in our case, it's more for discussion purposes. Um, so what is what is what are games actually? Well, you know, I think we come up with a with a set of different points that are fairly similar to to uh, you know some of the characteristics outlined here. I don't know if. Do you see any conflict there in terms of problem solving? That's probably the challenge bit yeah. to some extent, right? So we have competition, cooperation. That's the sociality element, right? Social arena to some extent, right? So, um, but we didn't, other than that, we didn't really capture that explicitly. So no. competition goals, progress. Yeah, progress is kind of implicit. It's kind of a narrative, I guess, close to what, what you have mentioned before, story in a way. Rules, fun. Ah, fun. Overrated. Um, interaction and participation, of course. Right. So, um, yep, yeah, cool. So something more refined to see how other people define it. And those people, I'm not sure if they ever played games, but <laughs> they would say that the game is a system which players engage in an artificial conflict defined by rules that results in a quantifiable outcome. Yes. <laughs> That's the kind of definition you were looking for, weren't you? Huh? No? <laughs> what is a game? Huh? Remember that one for the exam. No, don't. So, uh, because we want you guys to understand, not learn definitions, there's no point there, right? So, game is a form of place with goals and structure. Yeah, well, it's basically the, what do we have there? Goals and structure would be goals and rules, roughly, right? So, so it's a very small, very, very, very moderate, very minimal uh, definition, if you like, right? So, and uh, one other one, which I find is quite, quite sensible, if you ignore technology, it basically boils down to being goals, rules, and a feedback system, and voluntary participation so that's an interesting angle so good that you were talking about voluntary uh, participation on not so that's not another angle but you see how diverse the interpretations are already right so it's there's no single right answer right even the exam you will not get that right so um, just to, to bear that in mind but it's important that you kind of in conception what you think uh, uh, constitutes a game and I think we isolated some of the more important ones being goal entertainment elements interactivity uh, uh, and uh, rules and a challenge, of course. Yeah. So yeah. So break. Ah, yeah. Break. Yes. We never do that thing. Break. Right. Um, 
So, uh, how much break do we give you guys? 10 minutes, that's sensible? Yes. So we give you 10 minutes after 15 past 9. Um, will Bjorn come in? Yes, right? So we do a bit of a game here later as well. So just be back at quarter past 9 and then we continue a bit. Try to stay awake. Don't go into the snow because you may not make it back. <laughs> and uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs>